Well, hello everyone. I really appreciate the opportunity to visit with you today and talk about a topic near and dear to my heart. It's something very concerning to all of us who work at public research universities. And that is, there is an attack on science today on many different topics. For example, evolution, sea level rise, climate change, vaccinations for our children, and GMOs. In every one of those cases, there is no scientific evidence that supports the stands against them. Humankind has invented the scientific method to try to figure out what truth is. And unless you believe in crystal balls or palm reading, there is no better way to seek truth. Is science perfect? No, nothing is. But the beauty of science is that it has the ability to correct itself. The more you repeat experiments, the more you establish a body of truth, the gold standard being a publication of your results and conclusions in academic journals after your work goes through rigorous review by your peers. Now, when I say science is under siege, I don't mean just criticism. In 2015, I took a call from the FBI's Domestic Terrorism Task Force investigating threats against one of our own professors. Apparently what made him the target of a threat were his efforts to publicly communicate the benefits of biotechnology. Well, things turned out okay, and you'll see for yourself because that professor is one of your instructors for this course. The larger point is this. When solid science does not yield the results that people hope for, they not only reject the conclusions, they question the integrity of the scientific community, dismiss solid science as just another point of view, discredit the people who spend long, solitary hours following the evidence wherever it leads. This siege is dangerous to our democracy and to our notion of progress. In the coming weeks, you'll become familiar with four examples of how much scientific literacy matters and how it's sometimes ignored. Part of me is very frustrated that we still have to debate what I considered long settled questions. Questions like, is climate change really happening? Will GMO food make you sick? Do vaccines cause autism? We need scientific literacy because the naysayers want to muddle science as a way to make the case to do nothing. And when they succeed, we drag our feet instead of taking action that can save money, our environment, and even our lives. As we march toward a day when climate change's worst effects become irreversible, a U.S. Senator takes a snowball into the Capitol and holds it up as so-called proof that climate change is a hoax. We hold back technology that could feed so many more mouths in a world where 3.1 million children die of starvation each year. And we get parents refusing to vaccinate their children because of a retracted 18-year-old journal article. That you've even enrolled in this course is a good sign that you're interested in truth based on evidence instead of ideology. You've taken a very important step to inform yourself not only on these issues, but on how science in general works in the real world. I urge you to think deeply and ask questions. Those questions can point the way toward establishing new truth or changing what we currently hold to be true. What shouldn't happen is that evidence gets shouted down or characterized as a guess because there's a 1% chance it might be wrong. Marsha McNutt, the president of the National Academy of Sciences, put it this way. Science is not a body of facts. Science is a method for deciding whether what we choose to believe has a basis in the laws of nature or not. Once you've completed this class, I hope it reminds you for the rest of your life of the importance of paying heed to science. And by that, I mean knowledge that's been generated by a truly scientific community, not by clerics, not by industry, and not by activists. I won't be around to witness the worst effects of climate change, but you might. Or maybe you'll be around to see how the world rallied around the cause of its own salvation and took the action necessary to fend off environmental apocalypse. People like you who inform themselves and speak up for truth make it more likely that the latter scenario will play out. 
Whether you intend to pursue a career in science or not, it'll be worth it to apply yourself in this course. You'll be faced with so many choices, who to vote for, what to feed your kids, what to buy, how to care for your bodies, and even your minds. You won't be able to do independent research to inform your every decision. The best you can do is hone your ability to identify sources of evidence-backed information. I hope that this course will help you distinguish a true scientific community from sources of information driven by ideology, faith, or profit. Scientific literacy gives you a better shot to have your actions produce the consequences you were looking for. In short, to live the life that you intend. I commend you for enrolling in this course. I hope you'll emerge from it with your own ideas about which voices speak mostly with volume and which ones speak with something much closer to wisdom. Thank you.